Hey everybody, it's Dave here from Dragon Hill Games and I'm back at you with another Zendikar Rising pre-release kit opening video. So in this video, we're gonna open two pre-release kits and check out what is to be had inside. Okay, we'll set that one over there for the moment. So kit number one. Man, if you didn't check out the first video, it was a sponsored one, check that out. I'll post that up there. It was a pretty good pre-release kit and I really liked the dice that we got. But this one, however, in this particular kit is more of just a plain old sort of white um, dice. Yeah, okay, where is the, there we go, there is the Zendikar rising a symbol. So that one had a plain white dice. We'll put that up there. Of course, we got our six booster packs. We will open those momentarily. A Luminarch Aspirant is our foil promo. So I actually really like this guy. I think everybody kind of thinks he's a little underwhelming, but I'm, I'm sure in definitely in limited, he would be a monster, but I think he's pretty good in commander too. Might even see some standard play. For two mana, you get a one one. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target, creature you control. So something that kind of must be dealt with or just keeps making everything bigger. Of course, we get an arena code card as well. A little divider for your magic cards, and then some sort of instruction slash gear up for adventure. Hmm, looking at type card. Okay, let's get into opening these packs. So kit number one, all right. Yeah, like I mentioned in the other video, sadly, no pre-release up here in Canada, at least not in Ontario where I am. They kind of pulled back the reins a bit and we are not allowed to have pre-releases this time around. So we got a Blood Chief's Thirst, it's our first uncommon, a Shatter Skull Minotaur, a Callahenny Ambush, which is one of the flips, which flips over to Callahenny Territory, which enters the battlefield tap. So the awesome, you sort of have the op option to play the instant, which is target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control, or you can play it for the event or the land side, whichever you happen to need. And our rare is a Feldar Retreat, which is a really awesome enchantment. I think this will definitely see some commander play. Four mana, has landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control. Choose one, either create a 2-2, a white cat beast creature token, or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So that is the showcase version. And then awesome, we get a full art land in every single pack and a token. Okay, just make some piles, see if I can keep this stuff organized this time. Shouldn't be too hard with six packs, right? Hmm. Okay, pack number two. All right, here we go. Get through our commons here. I'm not really gonna do slow down or talk about the commons. Uncommons, like I mentioned, I'll post a video up there if you want to see a long form video of more where we sort of take our time and look at each card. I haven't seen this guy yet. Tarju Paragon, two mana for a three two, seems pretty good, he's an elf. Tarju Paragon is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. Okay, so this is one of those multi-class type things. Kicker of three. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, reveal the top six cards of your library. You may put a card that shares a creature type with it from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So good for filling out party spots if you are interested in playing a party style deck. And then we have a island and one of these sort of filler tokens that you can represent, use to represent one of the modal dual flip cards in your deck. Pack number three. Okay. All right, I like that they put in alt art versions of cards just in the commons and uncommon slots. They've been doing that in the last few sets as well. We have a Journey to Oblivion. We have a Marassa Sproutling, a Vastwood Fortification, and a Master of Winds. Four mana flying, one four. When Master of Winds enters the battlefield, draw two cards and then discard a card. Whenever you cast an instant, sorcery, or wizard spell, you may, ma may have Master of Winds. Base power and toughness become four one or one four until end of turn. 
Okay, and then we got a foil McKinney Ox. All right, a planes and a copy token. Pack number four, kit number one. Okay. All right, so we got a core Blade Master. Core is definitely a theme, a running theme in Zendikar Rising. Then we have a Taunting Arbor Mage. We have a Zoff Consumption and a Throne of McKindy. So this is a rare land. It taps for colorless. You can pay one, put a charge counter on Throne of McKindy, and you can tap it to remove a charge counter at two mana of any color. Spend this only to cast kicked spells. A forest and then another token. Two packs left to go. Okay. Some crazy crabs and stuff in this deck. Just made me think of that looking at that top card. Jesus, there's like a 017 crab. And then you got that awesome sort of ruin crab, which is um, a really good sort of alternative to Hedron Crab. Okay. Rare for this pack, Skyclave Apparition. Three mana, Core Spirit, 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non-land. Non-token permanent you don't control with CMC4 or less. When it leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates a XX Blue Illusion creature token, where X is the converted mana cost of that card. And then we got a mountain and another info card. Last pack, first kit. Okay. All right, so we got a Skyclave Plunderer. A Ravager's Mace. Equipment is definitely also a running theme in this set. And then we got a Bean Veil. Ooh, and our mythic is a Drana, the Last Blood Sheep. This thing is really awesome, would be really good in a pre-release or any sort of limited environment. Five mana of Legendary Vampire Cleric, Flying 4-4. Four, four. And when it attacks, Defending Player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard. You return that to the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. It's a vampire in addition to its other types. And then we got a swamp and another card representer token. Okay, I'm going to clear this out and we will open the second kit. Be right back. And we're back. Everything is all cleared up. Time for kit number two. That first kit was kind of meh. So let's see if we can do a little bit better in this one. All right, and then we got another solid dice, opaque, I guess. So maybe it was an anomaly. Maybe there's rare dice in these pre-release kits. Cause if you watch the other video, there was a really cool looking um, sort of pearlescent dice that I got. All right, the promo for this is Nahiri Heir of the Ancients. So mythic rare planeswalker promo. It would have been sweet to have in a pre-release kit. Of course, arena code and card divider. Six packs. Let's get on to pack number one. What are you guys thinking of the set? Let me know. You know, I ask this in all my videos. You're getting out to pre-releases. Did you pre-order some stuff? Yeah, we had uh, sold out of uh, collector boosters on our website, www.dragonhillgames.com. Archpriest of Iona, I've seen this guy coming up a lot. One mana was star two, and essentially his power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures in your party. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. A foil, Fullard Island, so that's sweet. And then we got a mountain and one of those replacement cards. Pack number two. Okay. Yeah, are you getting out to a pre-release? If you do, why don't you come back here after this weekend coming up and let me know how you made out. Of course, all of these pre-release cards are only available after this weekend. Madding, maddening Cacophony. So two mana, it's a sorcery with a kicker of four. Each opponent mills eight cards. If this spell was kicked, instead, each opponent mills half their library rounded up. Pretty sweet in a mill deck. Okay. And then we got a Full Art Swamp and a Cat Token. 
pack number three. Yeah, come back, let me know how you did with your pre-release. If you were able to play one, that's awesome. This really is my favorite time in the store and I'm a little bit, not a little bit, I'm a lot disappointed that we are not having pre-releases this time around. Rune Crab, I really like this guy. In most respects, he's just better than Hedron Crab. So I would expect him to have a decent price tag in the future. Casal's Fury, and then we have an upside down Altered, I guess, showcase of Valakut Exploration. So this is one of those, um, you know, enchantments or spells type of thing on one side and then the land on the other. Three mana, it's an enchantment with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card as long as it remains exiled. At the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut's Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard, then Valakut's Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. I'm sorry, this is not a modal dual flip. That is just a regular enchantment. And then we have an island and another representation card. Pack number four. Okay, here we go. Seems like a good kit so far. I'm actually really impressed with this one. An attendant healer. We got a Marasa Sproutling. A Palaka Predation. Another Archpriest of Iona. So that was, oh, we got two in the same kit. Interesting. And then we have a Plains and a Info card. Pack number five. Okay, pretty good kit so far. I think White Red definitely would have been the way to go with that Nahiri, those two Archpriests and that Valakut Exploration. Okay, so as far as Uncommons, we got Taunting Arbor Mage. Then we got a Relic Golem and a Kaberia Takedown. Our rare was a Nighthawk Scavenger. I really like this guy. Three mana, Flying Death Touch Lifelink. He's a 1-3. And Nighthawk Scavenger's power is equal to 1 plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyard. Pretty cool guy. And then we got a Foil Iridescent Horn Beetle. Okay, Forest and another representation card. Last pack, folks. Here we go. Okay. Let's get right to those uncommons. An Umbra Mystic. Okay, a Blood Chief's Thirst. This is actually pretty cool. Uncommon, one mana cost. It's a sorcery, unfortunately, but destroy target creature or planeswalker with CMC cost two or less. If the spell was kicked, instead destroy target creature or planeswalker. So at worst, you're paying four mana for hard removal that gets rid of Either a creature or planeswalker, really good, especially in limited. Callahani Ambush. And then our rare was a Verazul, the Split Current. So he is a blue, green, and X, a legendary serpent. Verazul, the Split Current, enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it. A plus one, plus one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it, okay? Whenever you cast a kick spell, you may remove two plus one plus one counters from Verazul. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. Interesting, might end up being a commander. And then, oh my god, look at that. We got a foil Nissa of Shattered Bows. Four mana, I really like this Nissa. She enters with four loyalty counters. She has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a loyalty counter on Nissa. You can pay one or plus one her to untap target land you control. You may have it become a 3-3 elemental creature with haste and menace until end of turn. It's still a land. And her minus five is you may put a creature card with CMC cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control onto the battlefield from your hand or graveyard with two plus one plus one counters on it. Really nice foil Nissa of Shattered Bows. Wow, two Planeswalkers in the same kit. And then we got a mountain and a cat token. All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. We're doing a bunch of box opening videos, so if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're a subscriber, as always, I wanna thank you for being here. If not, now's a great time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I post at least two videos every week. Bye for now.